Hello everyone, and welcome to the Los Angeles Rams rebuild on Madden 24. Now, I tried updating an updated roster, but how Madden works is if you update an updated roster, you have to start at the beginning of the 2023 season, and I wanted to start at the draft. Unfortunately, we're at a weird time right now in Madden where there's been a bunch of free agency signings, but if you do an updated roster with the free agency signings, then you can't get the draft right away. So we're in this month time period before the draft where you kind of just have to make shit up. So here I am making stuff up. I decided to do a team with minimal free agency signings to make this as easy as possible myself. And we're going to be re rebuilding the Los Angeles Rams without Aaron Donald. I would like to say that this is going to be a realistic rebuild. So no BS trades, nothing like that. And I am going to be using the current Rams roster, which if we look at the Rams roster, it's unfortunately got a lot of holes and isn't that good. And their best player defensively saw this and decided that he was going to retire. So Aaron Donald, I'm going to make retire right now. Uh, I, you can't just cut him because a team is easily going to sign him. So just what I have to do is go make Aaron Donald old as crap, make him worth nothing, and lower his overall. All right, well, unfortunately for Aaron Donald, I just completely massacred him, made him a 69 overall and only 40 years of age, and I made his cap hit nothing. So Aaron Donald is now off the team for the Los Angeles Rams, and now they are a much worse team defensively. Good God. <laughs> defensively, this is a very interesting team. In free agency, they did sign Cameron Curl. That was like one of their big free agency signings. So hopefully he's there in free agency. He usually is, and I'll pick him up. Offensively, this team has Puka Nakua and Cooper Cub. A really good one to punch offensively. And they also have uh, Kyron Williams here, who was a really damn good running back for them last year. So hopefully he can continue the breakout here. Offensive line is eh. Tight ends, they have Tyler Higby, who seems like he's been there for a really long time. But this Rams team is going to need some help off on both sides of the ball. But see, in real life, I'm pretty sure the Rams let Joel Jordan Fuller walk, and then they signed Cameron Curl. So that's what I'm going to do. Fuck, oh, did they re-sign Kevin Dotseth? I'm going to have to look some of this shit up. Okay, all I saw was that it was a three-year deal. So we're going to give him this and hope that he signs. Three-year, $10 million deal for Kevin Dotseth. Perfect. He's probably the only person that's actually worth signing here on the Rams free agency list. Oh, John Johnson the third. Fuck, I think they let him walk too. Did they? Oh my God, did they let their entire secondary walk? Okay, so in free agency, they just haven't re-signed Witherspoon or John Johnson. But Fuller, they did let walk and he went to a new team. So... It is my choice if I want to re-sign Witherspoon or Johnson. And I think I'll re-sign both of them, considering we have no depth at all. So Witherspoon, I will give a one-year contract to. John Johnson, I am completely fine giving this two-year contract to. And then everyone else here, I am completely fine with letting them walk. Nobody here is worth re-signing. And I'm good now to go into free agency here with the Los Angeles Rams, who are going to need a lot of help. So free agents, I'm not going to sign anyone that's already been signed. So I'm pretty sure Trent Brown signed with the Bengals, Pittman with the Colts, Michael Pierce went to... He signed with somebody. Calvin Ridley obviously went to the Titans. Chide Awuzie, I think he re-signed with somebody too. Cameron Curl, here we go. Here's the free agent that we do get a sign for the Rams. We will give him a big contract. Um, they also were signed Jonah Jackson to a contract. I saw that, but I'm pretty sure the the Detroit Lions already re-signed Jonah Jackson, so I'm not going to sweat over it. I'll see if there's any other free agents here that I want to sign. Highly doubt it, but maybe someone will stick out to me. Besides Cameron Curl... The only other real free agent that we could sign was Andre James. So I gave Andre James a contract here. We'll probably get both of them. I don't see why we wouldn't. Madden's going to take light years for it to go. And we got Cameron Curl and Andre James. So here's the updated team. The offensive line. Who is... Oh, he was a rookie last year. Steve Olave out of TCU. The, the offensive line for the Rams is okay. They definitely need another left tackle. And I'm almost positive here that Rob, yeah, Rob's 32. So 
So tackle's a big issue for the Rams. Their offensive weapons are good enough. They definitely are going to need another wide receiver. Cooper Cup is, what, 32 now? 31. Wide receiver is an issue for the Rams. Obviously, Matthew Stafford isn't getting any younger as well. Stafford at 36. So quarterback is also going to be an issue here for the Rams as well. Defensively, it's it's bad. Especially this defensive line. It This is absolutely horrendous. I might try to just go find some guys that can play defensive line just to fill up this depth chart, but good God, it is bad here in LA. They are going to be having a rough season. So one of the things about doing a realistic rebuild is I am using an updated draft class or a real life draft class here. So the Los Angeles Rams, and for us, we could honestly do anything that we want. <laughs> As the Rams here at pick 19, we can literally take anything that we want um i don't need to do private workouts because i already know how good the players are it's a real life draft class let's quickly take a look at the rams draft picks here so they have pick 19 a first a second a third two fifths and a sixth next year we have a couple of six okay so we got a first, a second, and a third to work with here in two fifths. Let's make this team better. I know we're going to be able to <laughs> with how bad the team is. Anything that we get is going to help out. And let's sim to our pick here. Now I'm going to go pick by pick here. Because you know what? Maybe I will trade up if there's a player I really want. Bears go Marvin Harrison Jr. In real life, they'd go Caleb Williams. The... Washington Commanders go Jared Verse. In real life, they are going to go Drake May. Caleb Williams gets to then fall to the Patriots, because this is Madden. Arizona Cardinals are going to select Dallas Turner. I actually could see that. I don't think it's going to happen, but it's possible. J.C. Latham to the Chargers above Joe Alt. Okay. Okay, apparently Joe, Hall Joe Alt just sucks. Okay, there Joe Alt goes third overall tackle the atlanta falcons are going to select byron murphy out of texas the chicago bears you're going to go with <sighs> i gotta love the madden draft class brock bowers to the jets the vikings surely are going to take a quarterback Jaden daniels broncos get drake may broncos go with quinion mitchell and the raiders going with Tyrion arnold Saints here at 14. Picking up Fashanu out of Penn State. Colts here at pick 15 go Leatu Latu. The Seattle Seahawks at 16 go Chop Robinson. The Jaguars at 17 go with Malik Neighbors. And the Bengals at 18 going with Romo Dunze. So now let's see how the draft board's looking like for the Los Angeles Rams. JJ McCarthy's here at 21. I might take J.J. McCarthy. But let's see what else is here. Cooper DeGene's here for the Rams. That could be a shout. A zone, A catching, B block shed, B man. I I mean, Cooper DeGene's a really good player. The Rams need a corner. He's not, he doesn't have the best athleticism. He would almost play better in a... What, are, what am I trying to say here? He would almost play better as a safety. There's Amarius Mims here on offensive line. He could be a good player. C to F run block finesse isn't the best. But a lot of things I do like about Amarius Mims. And Amarius Mims might be the play here. Or Tyler Guyton. I think I'm going to go with Tyler Guyton, though. We need offensive line help. Star Dev, 6'8". We can move him over and immediately have him start at left tackle for us. We just we just need the help. We need offensive line help. I could have taken J.J. McCarthy, but do I realistically think he's going to be there? I'm not entirely sure. So we'll get the safe offensive line pick for the Los Angeles Rams. And now here in the second round... A lot of wide receivers are here. Max Melton out of Rutgers is here. Zach Frazier, center from West Virginia. 
I don't like, why does it say that Darius Robinson has dropped so much? Freak athlete, A play rec, B block shed, B finesse move, B to D power move, A to C. I mean, Darius Robinson looks to be really good. The only issue that I have with him is why does it say here he's dropped 52 spots? That makes me think he's not that good. See, I really wish I knew what that meant. Because I would typically just be all over Darius Robinson. I'm going to draft him. We need help regardless. So Darius Robinson, he is hidden dev. He'll probably be just star dev. But we need help on the defensive line bad. So he's an instant upgrade to whatever we have currently on the defensive line. And now with our third round here at pick 19, Tez Walker is still here in the third round. And Tez Walker has great... Uh, Tez Walker is very interesting. Very interesting prospect out of UNC here. We're going to need a third wide receiver, and Cooper Cup's not getting any older. So I will go ahead and draft Tez Walker here. 95 speed, 96 acceleration. Holy crap, I didn't realize Tez Walker was, was that good in this draft class. And now let's sim to our fifth round pick, see if there's anything here worth taking. If not, I'll just let Madden sim out the rest of our picks. Um, I'm going to draft Jarvis Boley Jr. here. We need corner depth. He looks like the best available. Only normal dev, but it is the fifth round. I'm sure he'll be an upgrade or at least good depth for us. And I'll let Madden sim out our remaining fifth and sixth round pick here. Let's see what they think we need. Looking at the draft recap here, Tyler Guyton only a 72 overall. Oh, awareness. I think that's it. I think Tyler Guyton just has terrible awareness. So I guess whenever we get a Tyler Guyton upgrade point, we'll be doing plus two awareness every single time. Okay, so now I'm going to do training camp, and what I'm going to do here is Matthew Stafford, I, I don't need to get him an upgrade point. He's going to be gone next year anyways, so I'm just going to skip quarterback here entirely. Running back, I'm going to see if I can get a Kyron Williams here, a skill point upgrade, because that would be huge for our running game. We got gold first try with Kyron Williams. One thing about our defense, specifically our linebackers being so trash, is that it just made that wider or that running back one really easy. And now for the wide receivers here, we're going to be doing Pukunakua and Tez Walker here, getting them some more skill upgrades. We ended up getting gold with both Tez Walker and Pukunakua pretty easily. The wide receiver one, if you fail that one, I'm sorry, man. That sucks if you fail it. Now, Trench Hall Long Battle. I guess it's going to be Kobe Turner. He is the only person on here that is. Or we could also do Darius Robinson as well. I think I'm going to do it with Darius Robinson here. Get him the uh, get him his rookie snaps. And we get gold with Robinson as well. BB battles here. There's nobody that I really care about. I guess Jarvin Brownlee Jr. here will Try to get a skill point for him, but the secondary is just really bad for the Rams, and it's a bunch of people that I'm just going to be replacing in the future. And Brownlee actually got gold on his second attempt. Pretty impressive job from him there. And with the gold from Brownlee, that's going to have, I was about to say spring training. Training camp come to an end here for season one for the Los Angeles Rams. So I've just been going to the start of week one here, and we have a wide receiver mentorship. Hopefully this is 2-2 two, two Atwell. Come on, where's Tez Walker? Uh, have him get help getting open. Come on, Coop. You're supposed to be helping us with Tez Walker, not 2-2 two, two Atwell. Whatever, maybe 2-2 two, two Atwell is going to become the next GOAT for the Los Angeles Rams here. We also have a training camp standout. No clue who this is going to be for. This could be for anybody. Kobe Turner. Ooh. Let's get him plus three finesse and power moves. And hopefully he can be a massive force up the middle for us because we are going to need it in every way possible. So here we are at the start of the uh, first season for us, start of 2024. And I have very low, low, low expectations for us. So I'm only going to put us at four wins. We are not a good team where we are right now. 78 overall. Draft class, I'm just going to do auto-generated rookies from here on out. And I'm now going to also quickly set the scouts 
the scouts have been set. It seems like this is a heavy cornerback, wide receiver, and edge rusher class. So that's what I've set it to. I think we're going to be really bad. I think we're going to have a top pick. So it's really important that we get these scouting positions here right. And training camp standout. Let's see if Kobe Turner is able to get two sacks or tackles for loss. That would be absolutely incredible if he was. I've, I've seen players get past day one, but I've never seen them get past day two. And here for opening day keys... We'll just do pass game, I guess. I don't trust our defense to do anything, even though it is the Arizona Cardinals. So maybe our defense actually could do something here. All right, and here is the team, or at least here's the sub packages that I've set. We'll see how this works. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. But here's our updated team for year one here. The offensive line actually isn't horrendous. Our offense isn't terrible. The offense is okay. This defense is ass. This defense is really bad. A couple of pieces that we can work around with Kobe Turner, Cameron Curl. We'll see if Robinson can develop for us here. But the defense, we're going to need to upgrade this defensive badly. And I'm going to advance week by week till week three because week three is when you get to see the free agents here. And <laughs> I just said our offense was decent and I wasn't worried about our offense. We drop zero points. We drop a zero burger week one. Oh shit. Kobe Turner though, getting either getting two sacks or tackles for loss on the rise, plus 10,000 XP. Kobe Turner stepping up when Aaron Donald decided to depart. Offensively, I highly doubt that we reached our, uh, we should have gotten the win this week and this falls on us. I mean, we dropped zero points. <laughs> We dropped zero points on the Arizona Cardinals. Not good. Damn. Not good at all. But training camp standout, Kobe Turner again. I have never seen a player go both days. I've seen a couple of players like Kobe Turner now get in the first day with two sacks or tackles for loss. I've yet to see three sacks or tackles for loss. But who knows? Maybe Kobe Turner will be the first. Time to advance to week three. Hopefully we can at least get points in week two. That would be an accomplishment. I would I at least want to see double digit points. No, 14 points would be nice. Not asking for much here. Oh, and we win 17 to three. A complete flip of what happened in week one. Let's see if Kobe Turner is the first person to get these three sacks or tackles for loss. Yep, and it's just impossible. It just doesn't happen in Madden. Just doesn't happen. At least he got the week one upgrade, though. And now, let's see who needs a new contract here for the Rams. Ernest Jones does. He might be a player we bring back. That normal development is kind of scaring me, so we'll see how he does at the end of the year and determine if he needs to be re-signed or not. I mean, five years is a lot of money. However, the cap hit isn't terrible, and he is only 24. So, we'll see how he does. Witherspoon, we'll also see. Same with Carl Lawson. Tutu Atwell, maybe. Rob Harvenstein, we'll see how much he regresses. And with a team that's lacking a lot of talent, we don't have too many free agents that we actually need to sign. So let me set the regional scouting focus, and then I will sim to the midseason mark. Here we are at the midseason mark, and we are 1-6. It is not looking good for us. Let's look at the stats here. Let's look at what's going on. 25th in offense, even though we had an average offense. 14th in defense. Our defense, you know, it isn't terrible. Matthew Stafford is poop. Matthew Stafford is not doing good whatsoever. That's not good by, for Matthew Stafford there. Not good. Rushing. Kyron Williams is also not doing the best. Receiving, Tez Walker's doing pretty good. Puka Nakua really having a not-so-good year two here. Our offensive line, though, you can't really complain too much. Tyler Guyton has allowed zero sacks. I would say that's a pretty good first-round pickup for us. Sack-wise, Kobe Turner is three and a half. Robinson is two and a half. Byron Young has two. The sacks could be worse. We only have two interceptions, unfortunately. I mean, it, it could be a lot worse. I mean, we're 1-6. It's By a lot worse, I mean we could be 0-7. <laughs> um, 
we don't have too much to look forward to. Do not have too much to look forward to. But let me set the regional scouting focus, and then uh, we can continue to advance. I think I am maybe going to give er Ernest Jones a contract, but I don't really want to... This is what I'll do for him. If he signs this, we're on we're on good terms. Ernest Jones, I might just honestly trade. Honestly, and now that I'm saying that out loud, I don't hate an Ernest Jones trade. So that's exactly what I'm going to go do. He just wants too much money. I understand that he's 24, but we're not doing good right now. And just normal dev is... If he was even star dev... I would give him a contract offer, but let's see what teams are willing to give up for him. And I, I had to add a player in because the uh, the uh, Browns are over the cap. So essentially, I'm trading Ernest Jones for a third round pick, the Browns third round pick this year. And now I'm completely fine just simming to free agency. I know I just said free agency. I need to sometimes just think before I speak. I record all of these videos at night. Uh, I got college I gotta do, I got work I gotta do in the mornings, so I only really ever get to record these Madden videos because they take flipping four hours to record, so I'm always just a little bit tired, and like I said, I've been sick. Those are just excuses, but I don't know, I'm letting you guys get to know me a little bit, even though I know you don't care at all, and believe me, I don't really care either, but I don't know. Maybe I'll cut this part out too, I don't really know why I'm adding this, but my knee's weak, palms are sweaty. And we went 4-13, and 13, so we actually won some games there down the stretch. Let's look at our schedule here and see what happened. We beat the Seahawks, lost a ton of games. Holy crap, we went on a three-game win streak there, though. At Raiders, at Cardinals, smoked the Patriots, and then lost out. Hopefully, we still get a, a top pick. I honestly think with probably how we've fallen, we're going to get either pick three or pick four, because... In Sim, there are just some teams that suck horrendously. So let's see what pick we're going to end up with here. And no, we actually were the worst team in the league. We will have the first overall pick. That's actually really good. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm glad we sucked that much. Tez, Wa Tez Walker here with three skill points. I'm not going to complain about that at all from Tez Walker. Let's look at the stats here for this very bad season. 22nd offense, fourth defense, holy crap. So just our offense sucked. Matthew Stafford, we need to get a replacement for him ASAP. Kyron Williams had a good year running wise. You would like more rushing touchdowns though. Receiving, Tez Walker and Puka Nakua both with over a thousand yards. Cooper Cup, honestly, we just didn't get touchdowns. We actually didn't have the worst season in the world, but just we couldn't really get touchdowns here. And now let's send to the Super Bowl where who do, do we want to bet the Cowboys are in it? Holy crap. Cowboys actually aren't in the Super Bowl. First for everything. San Francisco 49ers are. And the Cincinnati Bengals. Will the 49ers lose again in the Super Bowl? Or will Kyle Shanahan finally get his first Super Bowl win? And the 49ers actually completely smoke the Bengals. Absolutely obliterate the Bengals. Let's see if there's any players that we need to re-sign here that I forgot about. Witherspoon... Do I really want to re-sign him? Probably not. Hutu Atwell... He'll be good depth for us. And he's a player that's on the Rams and Cooper Cup, call him Cooper Cup Jr. Rob Harvenstein, do I really want to give him a one-year $14 million contract? No, we can maybe get something better. And if I really do want to give him a contract, I'll just sign him in free agency. We got 125 mil. The Los Angeles Rams had a down year. I mean, we had a rebuild year. We got the first overall pick and have 125 mil in cap. Yeah, we sucked. But we are right now in a really good spot in terms of rebuilding. We got 122 mil. Show me some free agents. Show me some boys that the Los Angeles Rams can spend an ass ton of money on. Show me the guys. Nick Chubb. Joe Thune's here. Tyrone Smith is here. Demarcus Lawrence is here. Terion Johnson's here. JOK is here. Greg Newsom. Michael Pierce. Okay, there's some guys here. There's some guys. Let me uh let me do some stuff real fast and I'll get back to you. 
So I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I honestly don't think we're going to be able to get anybody. Like, just looking at this draft class, for starters, no one wants to come here. And two, no one's really going to actually make a difference. Yeah, there's JOK, but he has no interest in being here. He wants 22 million. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, I can't sign this to JOK. Like, I, I just can't. Like, I can't give him this contract. I don't even know if he'll accept that contract offer. Probably not. Who knows? Maybe. Let's see if we either, we even get either of these guys. Let's see what happens here. We got Greg Newsome. Perfect. You know what? If JOK wants to take my shitty offer. Okay. We got Greg Newsome. We got one person. Just all the free agency people there were just old. <laughs> we didn't need them at all. And now here we are. I might actually go sign an old ass right tackle just so that we have somebody there. Offensively, though, we need to get a quarterback. We need to get linebackers. We need so much stuff. And with us needing so many things, unless there's an absolute freak at the first overall spot, I'm definitely going to be trading out of that pick. I can tell you that. Let's go see if there's any tackles here that I can sign just so that we have somebody. Garrett Bowles, I might just offer a one-year contract on. I will. It's just a Band-Aid. He's just going to be playing there for a year. Just so that whatever quarterback we has is just doesn't die. And we got Garrett Bowles. Perfect. Time to do the private workouts here. I haven't taken a look at the draft class. So let's just see if there's like some freak here. Of course, there's a really good corner here. Why wouldn't there be? He's probably going to be a really damn good player. Another corner here who's round one talent. This quarterback doesn't look terrible. Mark Farr. Decent name, too. So in the mock draft here, where's the corner? The corner isn't supposed to go until 12th overall. I highly doubt that. Damn, the corner's not supposed to go until 12th overall. Why? The mock draft has us taking Mark Farr, and when I was looking at the quarterbacks, he was the only quarterback worth a top pick. I did put my scouting focus on him, or my private workout on him. We have him 50% scouted out. He's the only guy that I would give a contract, or I would potentially draft. An, an okay athlete. We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm honestly probably going to trade out of the first overall pick, but we'll see what happens, right? We'll see what happens here. We can draft anything. Our team's still terrible. Nothing is off limits here. And let's start the NFL draft. First, what we're going to do is let's see who's here at pick one, right? We knew this corner was going to be a top five talent. Order, this corner looks like an absolute freak. But I just, I can't take a corner here. Bubba Walton is going to be a really good player. But I can't justify taking a corner first overall. And we just have so many needs. Mark Farr, Mark Farr, 22 out of Houston, lightning quick release, has really good traits, eh, eh, athlete, eh, athlete, he's a pocket passer, a medium accuracy, a short accuracy, a awareness, so he's going to be high overall, Mark Farr, looks like a good quarterback so let's see what my trade down offers are here let's see what happens if i trade away the pick would the broncos take mark far at two so now i gotta weigh what i want to do here because there are some teams like the texans to trade down to 12 i'll get two first round picks and a second round pick this year. The Vikings will give me three firsts and three seconds if i trade down but i'm trading all the way down to 25 same here with the Seahawks, three firsts and three seconds to 20. So do I want to pass on the quarterback or the corner or an ass ton of picks? Or I see here the Raiders pick 11 and their two first round picks after that and a second in 2026. Or the Panthers here, see they're offering me pick seven, but I get a first, a second, the Jets are offering me 
just to trade down from pick four, I'm getting their first round pick next year. I'm getting their first, second, and third round pick next year. So what do I want to do? Do I want to trade down with the team and get three first and three second round picks and just stockpile on picks? Or do I just trade down with the Jets here and hope that I can get either the quarterback or the corner at pick four? You know what? I really want to draft a good player. I think I really either want that quarterback or that corner. But if I trade up with the, the Jets, if I trade down from one, a team's almost certainly taking that quarterback, right? Right? Is a team almost certainly taking that quarterback at one? I'm projected to take this quarterback. So if I trade down, is a team just taking this quarterback from me? I might make this trade with the Jets and then trade down again if that quarterback's not there. So I'm getting a first, a second. I'm, I'm getting the Jets fourth round pick, but I'm also getting their first, their second, and I think their third round pick in next year's class. So at pick one, the Jets... Go with Bubba Walton, the corner, who again in the mock draft wasn't supposed to go to 12. And now we know the Chargers aren't going to take a quarterback. Are the Broncos about to screw me over here and take the quarterback? Please don't take the quarterback. And they don't. Randy Triplett, the Chargers aren't going to take a quarterback. They go left tackle. So now we get the quarterback here at four. So we get the quarterback at four. We get Mark Farr at four and we pick up the jets first and second round pick on top of that i would see that's really damn good for us <sniffs> fucking normal dev are you kidding me god madden no quarterback who's taken in the top five is going to be normal fucking development jesus that's just so infuriating here we are third round pick pick one or second round pick anyone here worth taking this run stopper here doesn't actually look terrible a block shed b power move he's 21 has a ton of good traits i'll take uh eddie espineza oh my god it switched over players i'll take eddie Esp espineza here we still need defensive line pretty bad normal development again we just uh aren't hitting on our draft picks, at least in terms of development. Here we are, third round, pick one. Let's see if there's anyone here worth picking. If not, I'll probably just trade out of this spot. Tommy York here, holy crap. He looks like a steal. He looks like he, a hidden development, 84 speed, 90 acceleration. He can instantly come in and start at middle linebacker for us. Tommy York out of Texas, actually a really good linebacker pickup for us there. Probably the best pick we've made in this entire draft so far, unfortunately. And now let's see if there's any other steals that we can take here. This corner is around one to two talent, but is ass. C man, F press, D zone. Terrible traits. This tight end doesn't actually look terrible. Randy Goodwell, 22 out of Louisville. He has a... Eh, we'll draft him. <laughs> Another hidden development. We're hit. We're hitting our hidden developments here. Finally, in the third round, and now let's sim to our fourth round pick. We'll probably honestly just trade this away for maybe a third round pick next year. Vikings are gonna be a third round pick in 2027. See the Seahawks. That looks like a trade I'm willing to make. Oh, Jaguars will give me a seventh on top of it. Thank you, Jaguars. Now I will let Madden do the rest of the draft for us. All right, draft recap here. Let's look at the overalls of the guys we've drafted. Mark Farr is only a 73. Eddie Espineza is a 74. Cade York is a 70. Randy Goodwell is a 73. Madden drafted us a 73 running back. Hidden development? Nope, just normal. And let's see who we missed out on. That... Corner that was taken first overall is probably 82 overall. Really ass draft class, actually, outside of that corner. We know he's an X-Factor, but I'm, I wasn't going to take the corner first overall. He looks like an absolute freak, but the fact that we were able to get draft capital back from the Jets as well is really going to help out this team. 
What did we get? I know we got their first and their second. Do we get their third as well? These were our picks this year. We got the Jets first, second, and third round pick. Okay. So we got a first, second, and third in this year's draft class from the Jets. So the Jets are going to have no picks. So we lost on the corner, but we got a quarterback plus the Jets first, second, and third round pick next year. So I'm not too upset by it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to update the team and then do training camp. I've set the roster to how I want to, time to do training camp. And now we actually do have a rookie quarterback in Mr. Farr here. So I will be doing the quarterback challenge here. Oh my God, <laughs> we literally got exactly 2,000 points <laughs> with, with Farr. Literally bang on. Let's do the rushing attack again with Kyrene Williams. We were able to get it last time first try, so hopefully we can do that again. Took me a few tries, but on my third attempt, I was able to get gold with Williams there. Wide receivers, we're going to be doing the same ones as last time, Puka Nakua and Tez Walker. And we got gold again with both Tez Walker and Puka Nakua pretty easily. Here for the trench long battle, I think I'm going to do it with uh, Eddie Epineza here. Robinson, he got a couple of skill points last year, but... I just like Epineza more. I think he has a better chance of developing into something for us than Robinson. Uh, 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 okay. Don't question it. And he's already got gold on just the first two attempts, so dude can just run out of bounds. He already got gold, and it just took him two tries. What a freak. Athletically. Not a freak, uh, actually. That would be mean if I said it like that then his feelings would be hurt, and we don't want any of that. And now here, honestly, do I want to do any of these? We could do it for Greg Newsom. I'll do it for Greg Newsom, but that's about it. And there we go. Greg Newsom getting gold. Only took me one attempt, too. On a second try, he got it. And now what I'm going to do for everyone is I'm going to sim to the beginning of the regular season. I'm going to go week by week in case we get another training camp standout. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the start of the second season. And I still don't think we're going to be that good. I'll at least go for seven wins. Maybe we'll be a little bit better than we were last year. Draft class. Again, we're going to do auto-generated rookies. And let's look at the region here. Corner. Ooh, tackle. That could be good for us. And I see two D-tackles there at pick three and pick four. D-tackle could still be something that we look at. But corner's also important. So I'm actually pretty happy right now with this draft class. So let me uh, set it up how I want it to. The scouts have been set how I want them to be. Now let's do opening day keys. Last opening day, we lost 21 to zero. So uh, hopefully it doesn't come to that again. Let's do the passing game. But here's the team now for year two. Offensively, I like how the offense looks. We still have Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, and Tez Walker. We now obviously have... Mark Farr here, fourth overall pick, 74 overall rookie normal dev quarterback. The offensive line is still pretty good. Tyler Guyton's upgrading a little bit. The tight end that we drafted in the third round, Goodwell, I'm going to have him start over Tyler Higby, who's old and on the last year of his contract now. Defensively, defensively, <laughs> still could use the pelt, but we have pieces. I didn't even realize that John Johnson actually went up to superstar dev last season. Good job for him. Greg Newsome hopefully can be a big help to this defense. Our front seven's ass, but hopefully they can develop just a little bit here. And specialists, you know what? I don't, I don't entirely hate this. We'll see how this, we'll see how this works out here. Time to advance to week two. As long as we don't put up a zero burger again, we'll already be better than we were last year. We actually win. We win 20 to 14 against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Puka Nakua. You know what? A win's a win, man. Stop complaining. Exactly. We got the win. Get us the XP. Be happy that we won. We dropped 20 points on them. It couldn't have been that bad. Now we're going up against the Saints. At Bucks at Saints, week one and week two. Not the easiest schedule here for the Rams against the NFC South. And we beat the Saints as well to start off 2-0. and And we got to go at Titans. Three straight away games? Come on, Madden. Damn, what a difficult schedule. Let's look at who needs to come back. Ooh, Kyron Williams is here. I'll definitely give him a contract. This honestly isn't terrible. I'm completely happy with this contract. And he'll come back for a big deal for us. John Johnson. 
We'll see. He might regress. That's the only thing turning me against that. No one here that actually sticks out that we need to sign, really, honestly. Fine by me. Let me set the uh, regional scouting focus, because like I said, with those two first, two seconds, and three third round picks, the regional scouting focus is going to be incredibly important. And we're four and two. You know what? I can't complain about that too much. Let's look at the schedule here. We did lose at Titans, but we beat the Jaguars, lost at Colts, and ended up beating the Falcons here to go four and two. Damn. Very interesting schedule here for the uh, <laughs> for the Rams. Let's look at the stats. We're four and two. Let's see how we're doing. Offensively, ass. Offensively, we're doing terrible. Not doing good offensively. Best defense in the league, though. I don't get that. Mark Farr is having a decent rookie season. It's it's decent. Rushing, Kyron Williams is doing pretty good for us. I can't complain about those numbers. Receiving, pretty equal here. Cooper Cup is wide receiver two. Hmm. Pretty even running back stat or wide receiver stats here. Tyler Guyton with two sacks, unfortunately. Defense, let's see how the pressure's looking. Dar Darius Robinson with five sacks. Epineza with two. I I'm liking the sacks here. Interceptions, three for Jarvis Bowley Jr. I'm pretty sure I'm having him in our slot. So, you know what? A pretty, pretty interesting season stat-wise. Let me see the national scouting focus here. Simming to the playoffs. Let's see how we do down the stretch. And we finish 7-10. and 10. That's really hot. So we finish the season 3-8. and eight. <laughs> Fuck yes, baby. That's what I love to see out of Madden. And we beat the Seahawks too. So we were 5-2. and two. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Six straight losses after starting the season five and two to go five and eight. Wow. And the worst part about that too is I saw that we finished third in the division. So we might even have a high draft pick too because both the Seahawks and the Cardinals go six and 11. So we'll probably be around like pick 12, unfortunately. Hopefully the Jets sucked. Let's look at the stats here. 21st offense. Seventh defense. Offensively, Mark Farr, honestly not bad for a rookie season. I can't really complain. 33 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, 3,700 yards. Rushing, Kyron Williams did really good for us. Receiving, Pukunakua over 1,000 yards. And then Tez Walker and Cooper Cup both at 900. Cooper Cup, 13 touchdowns. Blocking, Garrett Bowles was ass. To be expected. Defensively, Eddie Espineza with nine and a half sacks, Brian Young with nine sacks, Robinson with six sacks, interception, Bowley Jr. with four, Newsom with three, Cameron Curl with two. You know what? Again, just like last season, our stats look better than our record show. But let's send to the Super Bowl here, see if anyone got any dev traits. <laughs> and Matt Farr went up to superstar development. <laughs> Thank you, Far. I will not be complaining about that one bit. I'm guessing he just won Offensive Rookie of the Year and just instantly jumped up to Superstar Dev. Yeah, Dev Trade Increase, Star Dev, Super, and then Player Awards Offensive Rookie of the Year goes up to Superstar Dev. I'm not going to complain about that one bit at all. Our tight end, Goodwell, was only Star Dev. Defensively, York is only normal dev. Byron Young goes up to superstar. Epineza, who is also only star dev, goes up to superstar dev. Holy, did he win defensive rookie of the year? Did I have both offensive rookie of the year and defensive rookie of the year? That had to have been what happened here. I did. I had offensive rookie of the year and defensive rookie of the year. Holy crap. The team is looking bright here. Epineza going all the way up to Superstar Dev. And now our defensive line doesn't look terrible. Greg Newsom also going up to Superstar Dev. Bowley going up to Star Dev. Byron Young here with Superstar Dev as well. 
the team actually taking a pretty big upgrade right now. Pretty big upgrade. Players ready to negotiate. John Johnson. I'll give him a one-year deal. I'll I'll give you like a one-year. I'll give you this. Okay. John Johnson's back on a one-year contract. Kendricks can walk. Blake can walk. Andre James can walk. Garrett Bowles can walk. All these guys can walk. We have 160 mil in cap. Please show me some free agents. We we're, we've got some young pieces now. Show me some free agents. We have so much cap. I can literally sign anybody here. Yeah, it it's happening. It, it's happening. Um, this this will happen. He will be a Los Angeles Ram. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I, I have the cap. This this is happening. I don't care how much I have to overpay for him. This is happening. He will be a Ram. He will be a Ram. He he will be a Ram. I, I can assure you, he will be a Ram. Marlon Humphreys I really want to sign, but unfortunately he doesn't want to be here at all. Rasul Douglas is here. Alright, let me let me explore free agency and see who I'm gonna sign. So, Micah Parsons, I, I just want to show you this contract I, I'm offering him. This isn't the contract. I, I offered him, literally, it was a five-year deal. The last year on the contract is a $45 million contract. I can't give him any more. I literally offered Micah Parsons $45 million. Marlon Humphreys, I heavily overpaid for. But Okay, fuck the New England Patriots. How much money do I have to offer for Marlon Humphreys? I offered him, he wants 15 mil, I offered him 20 million. I had coaches in a winner, uh, screw you Marlon. Give me a second here. All right, I'm heavily overpaying for Marlon Humphreys. Heavily overpaying for him. I, I, I hope I either get Parsons or Humphreys. I, I want either Parsons or Humphreys on the team. If we get both, that's great. I, I want one or the other. Okay, we get Marlon Humphreys. I literally was offering Parsons 45 mil a year. Holy shit. How much money is that? Okay, actually, I offered more money than that. Sc screw you, Micah Parsons. Whatever, whatever. It's fine. We got Marlon Humphreys, we got Daxton Hill, and we got Jawan Taylor. We got some decent free agent signings for us here. Let me look at how the team looks now with that. So I signed Jawan Taylor to a two-year contract. He's 6'5", and he's flexible. I'm going to move him to left tackle for now, but this was a really good tackle draft class. Jawan Taylor is someone that can slide inside. We need a center. But again, I don't. I feel comfortable moving Guyton in, in to like left guard and Abel over to center. So just someone on the offensive line. Offensively, we could use a wide receiver because Cooper Cup is regressing. But besides that, I'm fine with the offense. Defensively, we need another linebacker. We Micah Parsons would have looked really damn good on this team, but whatever. Marlon Humphreys is here. Greg Newsom is here. And Browley's here. Corner's looking really good. Jalen Johnson will be a good backup to this team. Honestly, what we really need is middle linebacker and edge rusher. And we'll see what this draft, draft class has to offer. But I'm not afraid to make a trade. We have so much draft capital that I'm not afraid to give up an absolute haul for someone if it so if the situation requires it. This actually got me thinking, what draft picks do we have? I actually don't know. How bad were the Jets? The Jets were good. Well, that sucks. Pick 25. We were pick 10. So we've picked 10 and picked 25. Jacksonville Jaguars actually sucked. They were pick nine. All right. I mean, we still have good draft capital, but pick 25 is kind of disappointing. I wish the Jets sucked more. So there were some guys that actually looked really good here in free agency. There were a couple of D tackles that actually looked phenomenal. Uh, we, yeah, we're pretty set on D tackle, but uh, LaMarcus Parsons here looks really good. This corner here, Tevin Withersberry, looks really good. He might not be a terrible pickup. Chris looks really good out of Notre Dame here. 
I also really like this edge rusher here. I might be trading up to seven for the edge rusher. There, there are some good players here. There's actually some really good players. This middle linebacker also looks really good too. So let's see how the draft goes out. First pick, I probably didn't need to do that with the Broncos, but let's look at the draft board here. Let's check out where these guys are that I scouted them. Let's see. So I scouted this ed this right outside linebacker here. Decent athlete, but A awareness, A tackle, B block shed, A to B power move, C finesse moves. He looks pretty good. A ton of traits. The Titans wanted him at seven. Let's also look at this linebacker that I was checking out. Demarcus Golden, A block shed, A pursuit, B tackle, pretty decent athlete, eh, Z, C zone, C man, A finesse move, A hit power. This guy is a very interesting prospect here. He looks like he's someone that could also be an on the ball linebacker too. A finesse moves, A finesse moves. I honestly might take him. I might pick at stick 10 and just take that guy. Let's see here how the draft board has fallen to us at pick 10. And at pick 10, that edge rusher that I was looking at is still there too. So we can either do gold, golden or the edge rusher. Look at Goldston here. A finesse move? A awareness, A block shed. He plays middle linebacker, but I feel like... He would be really damn good on the ball linebacker or off the ball linebacker too. I think we have our pick here with either Bartel or that other guy. See, and it's like, what do you want? But this guy has B block shed, only C hit power. I honestly might take Demarcus Goldston here. He looks like he could be an absolute freak. I honestly think I can put him off, off the ball. Normal development, 88 speed, 81 strength. I honestly might move this guy to right outside linebacker. He could be an absolute freak for us. And now let's sim to pick 25 here. We'll have the Jets first round pick. And let's see if there's anyone here worth taking with this spot. Like I said, we still do need offensive linemen. Nathan Griffin here, I do like. Obviously that pass block there looks scary. Mm. A lot of A's, but just D run block power, D pass block isn't the most promising in the world. Honestly, what I might do here is I honestly might trade this pick for an offensive lineman. All right, and I just traded my first round pick for Eric McCoy off the Saints. 29 center, 86 overall star dev. I probably, I probably over-traded a little bit, but like I said, I wanted to keep it realistic and fair. He was 29, so the Saints, I could see how they wanted to move on from his contract. We get a starting center. And now here at the second round with our pick, let's see if there's anyone here that we really like. I think there was a left tackle that I said I liked, right? Yeah, John Carson. I might just take John Carson here, and he could be good depth. We can see what we got with John Carson. He is hidden development. That could be something to keep an eye out on. Now let's go to our second second round pick here. Again, courtesy of the Jets. And let's see if there's anyone here worth drafting. Okay. I've traded this second round pick that I have, a third round pick, and a fourth round pick to the Denver Broncos for a first round pick next year. And now I'm gonna to advance to this third round pick that I have, see if there's anyone I like, and if not, I will let just Madden fill out the roster for me. Dra draft up some more depth. This linebacker doesn't look terrible. We'll draft him. He, he can just be depth for us. He could be good linebacker depth. Trey Wright out of Georgia here. And now let us uh, advance to the end of the draft. Okay, and looking at the draft here, Demarcus Golden is a 76 overall. John Carson's only a 72. 
Trey Wright's a 71. The CPU drafted us a 72 corner, only normal dev, unfortunately. And Jalen Carter, strong safety. Look at all the J's we drafted. Jamie, Jalen, John. Now let's look at the draft class itself and let's see if there's any like really good player that we missed. 82 overall left guard and an 80 overall corner. The damn. Holy shit. Holy crap. Look at all the really good corners. We didn't really need a corner. Oh, those this little the middle left outside linebacker that we passed on was 77. Only normal dev. Yes. Take that, Madden. Okay. And now next thing for me to do here is going to be to fill out the roster to how I see fit. So let me do that and I'll be back with you guys in a second. So looking at the team here, we do offensively we just need some guys to develop. I, I'm happy with the where the offensive line is. Goodwell, he'll continue to develop at tight end for us. Same with Tez Walker and Puka Nakua. Our quarterback, Mr. Uh, Mark Farr here, will continue to develop as well. Defensively, I'm looking at the defense. If we had Mark Micah Parsons, this would honestly almost be complete defense. We're just missing another off-the-ball linebacker. Micah Parsons would honestly make this defense complete. This defense would be so sexy with Parsons, but he didn't want fucking $45 million a year. Really like the star dev though. This team will continue to develop and just, I'm really happy with this where this defense is. Honestly, the only thing we need is right outside linebacker. Besides that, this defense is absolutely insane. Really like the defense here that we've crafted for the Rams. Offensively, we're gonna, we're gonna have to replace Cup, but offensively, we just need to develop. So this season that we have coming up is honestly just about developing, and I might even trade for a right outside linebacker. We will see where we're at. Now it is time to do training camp for the third year here. And just what I'm gonna do is I'm basically doing the same person as last year. So honestly, in the video, I'm just gonna skip over this unless someone goes up in a dev trait. But for quarterback, I'm gonna do Mark Farr. Rushing, I'm doing Williams. Wide receiver, will be Puka Nakua and Tez Walker. Trench long battle, we're gonna be doing uh, Epineza. And DB battles, it's going to be Greg Newsom. Maybe I'll do Marlon Humphreys too. So for DB battle, I actually decided to use Daxton Hill just to try to, he was only an 81 overall, just to try to get him a higher overall. And for the second DB one, I'm actually going to do Marlon Humphreys. We did send him to a two year deal. So getting him to a higher overall to a 91 would be really nice. All right, guys. And here we are at the start of season three. And I can't lie, I actually really like where we are. We are an 84 overall, have a ton of young talent, and we still have a ton of money in cap as well. I think that we can make the playoffs this year. Honestly, I'm just hoping for all these young, nice players that we have to develop, especially our quarterback and our defense. We have two first round picks this year because we did trade away a lot of our draft last year for an extra first this year. So we have two firsts. So again, we're going to do auto generated rookies and I'm going to set the scouts because again, drafting is going to be very important for us. And the scouts have officially been set. So now we can start season three here. Opening day keys against the Denver Broncos. Honestly, with how good our defense has been doing, let's do a uh, shutdown defense here. Let's stop the run game with our upgraded defensive line now. Let's see here. We'll advance week by week again to week three, just so that we can look at the free agents. I'm pretty sure Puka Nakua is going to need a contract, but we have the cap space for it, so I'm not too worried. And we do beat the Broncos 27 to 21. That doesn't make me believe that our defense did a good job if we allowed 21. Yeah, defense was not <laughs> happy with the run game. I thought that we would be able to stop the Broncos run game, but I guess Javante Williams, that offensive line, uh, gave us some issues. Now here going on to week three, well, back-to-back -back seasons, will the, Den uh, will the uh, Los Angeles Rams start out 2-0? and And yes, we will actually. Back-to-back -back weeks, the or seasons, the Los Angeles Rams are going 2-0 and here. Now let's see who's ready to negotiate. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure Puka Nakua is here. That's a massive contract he wants, but I will sign him to this. Puka Nakua has been a really damn good staple of this Rams offense, and Puka Nakua is coming back. Kobe Turner wants a big contract as well, and 
Can I just lower this just a little bit? Okay. For, he likes the contract as he doesn't want to say yes. Ryan Young, we'll see how he does this year. That superstar dev does make him a little bit intriguing, but he is 28. Steve Avila, I will, I do want to bring back as well. I'll give him a three-year deal, and hopefully that makes him want to come back, and it does, so we have him re-signed. John Johnson will probably let walk. We now have um, Daxton Hill. Kevin Dotseth, we'll see if he regresses at all. Cooper Cup, we'll have to see with him as well. And everyone else I'm fine with walking. So there's just a lot of players here that we'll just have to wait and see how they do this year with Cup, Dot, Seth, and Young. Kobe Turner's the only one I want to re-sign, but he just doesn't feel comfortable signing right now. So I will just set the regional scouting focus and then sim to the midseason mark we'll, where hopefully Kobe Turner will want to come sign with us. And at the midseason mark, we are again 4-2. That's... We just lost the Packers last week, though, so we were 4-1. Kobe Turner, this is the offer we submitted. I will up your salary barely. Just come back and sign with us. Okay, and we got Kobe Turner back. Now we don't have to worry about any of these guys. I'm not going to trade any of them. We're, we're just going to write them out this season. We do have a tandem breakout defense. What defensive player really played good for us last week in the loss? Marlon Humphreys. I will I'll praise Greg Newsome. I highly doubt he's going to get any interceptions, so we'll just give him the ratings boost. Plus 2,500 XP. Plus three man and zone against the Cowboys. We're going to need that. I don't know how the Dallas Cowboys... Oh, they lost Micah Parsons. I forgot about that. That's kind of why they're such a low overall. And now let's go look at the stats and the schedule here. Oh, so we were actually 4-0 to start the seasons, but, but then we've lost back-to-back -back games at Giants, at Packers. That's not good. <laughs> Hopefully that is not going to be a trend that we see here with the Los Angeles Rams. But now let's look at the stats. 23rd offense. So our offense hasn't been that good. 8th defense, though. So our offense has not been the best, but our defense has been playing really well. Mark Farr, seven touchdowns, two interceptions, I'm pretty happy with. Kyron Williams is actually having a really good season right now. Receiving-wise, Tez Walker, Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, all relatively similar stats, except Nakua has touchdowns. On the offensive line, ooh, Kevin Dotz at the line the most sacks. That is something I will remember. Defensively, how we're doing pressure-wise? Byron, Byron, not a lot of sacks, actually. Byron Young with three sacks leading the team. Kobe Turner with two. Epineza with 1.5. Interception-wise, only four. Very interesting team that we actually have right now. All right, so we looked at the stats. Let's sim in the playoffs. Last season, we went 4-2, and two and we finished 7-10. and ten. We went 3-8 and eight to finish last season. I'm hoping for a much different outcome this season. I would prefer either to lose every single game so we get a high draft pick, but what I really want to see is the playoffs here for the Los Angeles Rams. And we go 12-5 and five and get a first round bye. 12-5 and five with the first round bye is pretty impressive. Usually you see like a 13-4 and four team in there somewheres. What's the standings looking like? Chiefs 13-4. and four. So for the NFC here, wow. We were the best team at 12 and 5. No, no other teams were even 12 and 5. 49ers went 11 and 6. Ton of 10 and 7. A lot of 9 and 8 here. So, yeah, we get the first round by. I'm not going to complain about that at all. We did just lose the 49ers last week, which kind of worries me if we have to play them because they will be a wild card team. So, team schedule here. We actually lost three straight and we dropped to four and three. But then since dropping to four and three, we then ended up going eight and two. Went on a massive win streak here, lost to the Chiefs and lost to the 49ers. So did we go one and one against the 49ers then? We did split against the 49ers. Against good teams though, we lost to the Chiefs, lost to the 49ers, lost to the Giants who were in the playoffs. So it seems like we beat up on these bad teams, but against good teams here, we struggled. So 
I don't have a lot of high hopes here for the playoffs, but we'll see what happens. Our offense, oh my god, our offense jumped up to second, but our defense went down to 16th. Mark Farr here with a really good second season, 31 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, 4,200 yards. Kyron Williams had a phenomenal season, 20 touchdowns, 1,400 yards, 4.9 yards per carry. Receiving, Pukunakua went over 1,000 yards, Randy Goodwell almost went to 1,000, Cooper Cup here with 800, and Tez Walker kind of went down a little bit, surprisingly, and only had two touchdowns as well. Blocking-wise, let's see how that ended up going. And Juwan Taylor ended up having 10, Tyler Guyton with 9, yikes. Interesting, we allowed a lot more sacks that, than I would have preferred. Kobe Turner with eight sacks, Darius Robinson with six, Epineza with six, Bry Byron Young with only five. We really need another off the ball linebacker. We need an edge rushing linebacker desperately. Our punter is our field goal kicker. Why? Why is our punter kicking our field goals? What the flip, Madden? Something I thought about is what is the, uh, I was going to say, what's the dev trade of our middle linebacker? Only star dev, but we still have a good young linebacker there now up the middle. Okay, I reorganized the depth chart. Now here we are against the commanders in the first round in the divisional. We should beat the commanders. We're just going to play it cool. We're not going to guarantee a win because then the commanders are going to be pissed off. I'm just going to sim the week. I don't even think I need to go into this game. Let's just beat the commanders. We're a better team than them. We had two more wins, better overall. Shouldn't have any issues here against the commanders. Fuck me, dude. Are you kidding me? We dropped 17 points on them. Okay. Okay. Whatever, I guess. And the Commanders did lose to the Giants, so it's Giants-Ravens in the Super Bowl. That's a pretty interesting matchup here. And now let's go see if anyone ended up going up in dev trait for us this season. And Pukunakua is up to an X-Factor, and Goodwell is up to Superstar Dev. Defensively, nothing. Oh, Greg Newsom also went up to Superstar Dev. Perfect. Okay. That's actually really nice. So now what we need here going to the final year is we just need off the ball linebacker defensively. Besides that, the rest of our defense is really, really good. You could say maybe another third corner, but I, uh, Browley Jr. has been doing good for us. Our middle linebackers will continue to develop, but we need a right outside linebacker or left outside linebacker. And offensively, Cooper Cup's probably not getting any younger. Might have to replace him. We'll see what happens here with Dotseth too. How old is Juwan Taylor? Did he like regress or something? Or did he just not go up at all in overall? I really don't know, to be honest. But anyways, maybe offensive line. But we'll see what is in free agency first. But we have a ton of cap space. If there's a really good edge rusher, I will be signing him. Let's see. With our players ready to negotiate, pick up Tyler Guyton's fifth-year option. No, I'll let him walk. Byron Young. I think I'm going to let him walk. I'll re-sign him in free agency. John Johnson, I'll let walk. Kevin Dotson. Oh, Cooper Cup just straight up retired. Okay, so Cooper Cup retired. So we're only... Byron Young, I'll let walk. Kevin Dotson, a one-year contract. There could be a better offensive lineman in free agency, though. That's the only thing that worries me is, like, say I do give him this, but then there's just a better guard there. There usually are really good offensive linemen in free agency. So I'll let him walk as well. If I want to re-sign either of those guys, we have 110 mil in cap. I have the ability to re-sign them if I really want to. So let's see. Here's in free agency. Come on, show me some good free agents. Show me an edge rusher. Okay. Uh, 
Tyree Kills here. So is AJ Brown, who wants to be here. Landon Dickerson is here. T Taylor Decker is here. Joe Thune's here. Tajay Spears. There's Kevin Dotson. I don't see an edge rusher, but I do see some players that intrigue me. So uh, let me go see what I can do here in free agency. So here are the contracts I've put offers on. I offered AJ Brown a big contract, Landon Dickerson a big contract, Bradley Chubb a little one-year deal, and Lucas Van Ness a two-year deal. I'm hoping for either AJ Brown or Landon Dickerson. Both would be great, but as long as we get one, I'll be happy. If the Patriots steal another free agent from us, I'm going to lose my damn mind. And we got AJ Brown and we got Bradley Chubb. Okay, perfect. Landon Dickerson did end up going to whatever team signed him, but we got AJ Brown. We got Landon Dickerson. Luke and Vi Luke, Lucas Van Ness had a contract offer there. So now I have to go sign another guard. Joe Thune might be it. Oh, Kevin Dotson went to the Patriots. Of course they did. Patriots are signing every single damn free agent there is. So we need a guard, so I'm going to go get Joe Thune now. All right. I gave Joe Thune a big deal. I upped the contract offer on Lucas Van Ness, but if he really wants to go to Washington screw him he can do that and we got lucas van ness and joe thuny so overall actually really good for agency got aj brown we got our right guard replacement and we got two guys that can play off the ball linebacker so let's look at the team now so i didn't realize this but uh kyron williams also went up to superstar dev so looking at our offense now I am really happy with this offense. Puka Nakua, AJ Brown, Tez Walker, Kyrie Williams. As long as uh, Mark Farr can continue to develop, we have a really good offense here. Offensive line, I'm really happy with. Juwan Taylor is probably the weak link here, but you know I, I can't complain about him too much, but he's probably the weakest link, so maybe we'll upgrade at left tackle if we need to at the trade deadline. Defensively, we still do need an elite edge rusher. Lucas Van Nesh and Bradley Beal are just one-year options, so I might look to go get an elite edge rusher if possible. But besides that, I really am happy with the rest of the defense here. Middle linebacker, you could use an elite upgrade at, but it's not my biggest concern. We do have two first-round draft picks. So if there isn't like a stud who I think is gonna help us in this first year, Look to see me trade those two first round draft picks for an elite edge rusher. Kind of like when the Raiders traded two firsts for Khalil Mack. Something kind of like that. Or the Bears traded two first round picks for Khalil Mack. My bad. I, I caught myself there. Don't call me an idiot. Okay. So I looked at free agent. I looked at the draft class. And there were a couple of players that looked really good. I don't know where our draft picks are. I know where our pick are is, but we traded with the Broncos and the Broncos were the fourth worst team. <laughs> That's pretty good. So we'll have pick four, which we might need because the top player in the class actually looks like he could be a freak. He was a left end, which we don't necessarily need left end, but maybe he could play outside linebacker. Probably also should have looked at the mock draft as well. But let's look and see how good this left end is. There was also a offensive lineman that looked really good as well. So this left, uh, I don't know actually. A power moves, B finesse, B block shed. Could he play outside linebacker? Oh my god, he could. Look at those traits. He's an absolute freak off the edge. A tackle. A to B impact block, B pursuit. This guy looks like a freak. And with that elite athleticism, I think I could honestly move this guy up to left outside linebacker. I think I might be trying to trade up to pick one to get him. Now, there was also this right tackle here that I looked at. Larry Overton. He actually looks like he has some really good traits here. Pass blocking is a little weak with C pass block power and C run. Oh, it just looks like it's his run blocking that's weak. So Larry Overton actually could be a really good left tackle or right tackle here for us. But the round one to two talent makes me think that he's probably only a 73-ish overall. And we already have, I mean, we already have tackles that are that overall. So it's not like he's going to be an immediate impact for us. There was also a corner here that I scouted. 
Son Craig. Damn, he looks like he's going to be really good. Rasan Craig here actually looks like he could be really good as well. So I might, I'm probably going to trade up to number one to get Tavon Powell. And then maybe I'll even see about trading up again to see if I can get Rasul Craig here. Well, let, let's, let's see what happens here. Let me start making some trades. So to move up to one, I gave up both of our first round picks this year. Our second round pick next year and Jawan Taylor. The left tackle that we drafted last year was actually a 76 overall and a lot younger, and Jawan Taylor was on the last year of his contract. So I'm getting three overall worse at left tackle. The price to move up to number one is just... Sorry, my dog's barking. The price to move up to number one is just so brutal and Madden. But for this left outside linebacker that I think that's going to be an absolute stud, who's a top five talent, I just have to take him. 85 speed, 86 jumping, 90 strength, 90 acceleration. He can easily move to left outside linebacker for us, or right outside linebacker. Now with this corner, I'll maybe uh, just keep drafting here to like pick... I won't let the corner get past pick 12. So if he gets drafted before pick 12, then the corner can walk. But if he's there at 12, I'm drafting the corner. Corner goes there at eight. Come on, Bengals, don't take a corner. Come on, Seattle, you don't need a corner. Fuck, you literally went at pick 11. Damn it. Okay, well, we'll advance to our second round pick now. I actually really wanted that corner too. That sucks. That corner's going to be such a good player. Here at pick 11, is there anyone else that's really good? This wide receiver doesn't look terrible. He could be good wide receiver depth. Eh, eh, whatever. Whatever. We need wide receiver depth. Or I guess we don't really, but whatever. And we'll let Madden just sim out the rest of the draft. We got that really good right outside linebacker, first overall. Draft recap now. Let's see who's what overall. And only a 78 overall for the left end is not stellar. But he was a top five talent. Holy shit, this running back. That the I knew Craig was going to be good, man. I knew it. Fuck. Come on, don't, don't show me X-Factor. Don't show me X Factor, please. Oh, okay, just start F. Okay, awesome. <laughs> okay, not as bad. I knew he was going to be good, though. He was a top five talent. 77 or overall fullbacks, the fourth best player in the draft class. And of course, the Patriots get a top five player, too. I hate the Patriots so much. Here we are now going into the fourth season. I'm going to quickly set the roster, and then I will show you guys what that looks like. Here's what the roster now looks like going into the fourth season. Mark Farr, 81 overall, superstar dev quarterback. We can just only hope and pray that he continues to develop because he's got weapons around him. 95 overall X-Factor AJ Brown. 95 overall X-Factor Puka Nakua. 86 overall Tez Walker. 92 overall superstar Kyrie Williams. Goodwell, 80 overall tight end. Pretty decent offensive line. The offensive line isn't crazy. But the lowest overall is a 76 star dev Carson. We drafted him last year. The offensive line is pretty good. Defensively, got a great defense as well. Powell, I'm going to have him start over Lucas Van Ness. Sorry, Lucas. But defensively, we just have to continue that our hope and pray that our defense can continue to develop as well. Really good defense that I'm really happy with. Middle linebackers, the only like questionable mark. But if these guys can both continue to develop, we will be fine. Now that I have set the roster, I'm going to be doing training camp. Again, I'm not going to show you guys this because I'm doing everything the same. The only difference is the trench long haul battle will now be with our first overall pick rookie that we drafted. Okay, training camp has been complete and now I will sim to the regular season unless something interesting happens. And here we are at the start of season four. I'm really happy with the team. I really hope that this season we can actually win a Super Bowl. It'd be really nice to just be able to end the league here at year four. And let's set our season goals. And Super Bowl or bust, baby. I'm really happy with the team. If Mark Farr can just be a good quarterback for us and continue to develop, I really think that that could happen.
opening day keys we're playing up against a Steelers team that has a better defense than an offense so I'm hoping for a dominating offense and let's do it in the passing game I think that Mark Farr is going to come up here and have a statement I think this is the beginning of the third year for him because we had Stafford year one so this is Mark Farr's third season now and I'm really hoping that he can show us why he is the GOAT let me just make sure that the roster set exactly how I want it to be with the depth chart and everything and we will be good to go all right, the team is set. The depth chart is set. Let's sim to week three, just so I see who the free agents are. Let's get a week one win. We win. We win forty-one to zero. Breakout running back Williams has a chance to go up to X Factor. Four touchdowns or two hundred yards. It's not happening. That would be insane if he got four touchdowns or two hundred yards. That's not going to happen though. Let's see if we got the keys to victory. It seems like we should have done the running back one. Apparently. Yeah, it seems like we should have done the running back one. I wasn't expecting, or the or the defensive one. I wasn't expecting to win forty-one to zero. And after winning forty-one to zero, week one, let's get back-to-back -back wins here. Let's go two and zero for three straight seasons here, and just dominate the Browns. Besides, they don't deserve to win. They're they're not a good team. And we do. We beat the Browns as well. And let's see if Williams was able to get his breakout play. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> that was an embarrassing performance, coach. We have 103 mil in cap. Ooh, this is a cheap, cheap deal for Tez Walker. I will gladly bring Tez Walker back on the this team that is a very cheap contract Tyler Guyton I will also give a three-year deal to he can come back perfect we get Tyler Guyton Marlon Humphreys we'll see how much he regresses Darius Robinson maybe Broly Jr. will probably walk Eric McCoy that's a long contract that he wants Ooh, Joe Thune yeah, we'll see at the end of the year, even if we do a fifth year, to be honest. Um, let's upgrade the roster and let's sim to the midseason mark now. Here at the midseason mark, we are 5-1, and one, so we're taking a step up. We got our first loss last week to the Cardinals, who are 6-1. and one. Are you kidding me? We were 5-0, and oh, could have been 6-0, no, but we lost to the Cardinals. We got a weekly performance and a loss. Oh, York. Good job. Far, far. All right. I'm, I'm liking how the team looks. Six, five and one. Can't complain. We actually do have something to complain about because the Cardinals are six and one and just beat us. So we were five and zero. Oh, lost our first game. Five and one. Offensively, eleventh best offense. Second best defense. Offense is playing phenomenal. Oh my god. <laughs> Mark Farr is twenty and one. That's insane. Kyron Williams also having a really good year as well. Receiving AJ Brown. Bringing in AJ Brown was really good for us. Puka Nakua is also playing phenomenal as well. On the offensive line, three guys have allowed sacks, but our center and right guard haven't. So that's at least something positive. Defensively, Bradley Chubb with six sacks. Darius Robinson with three. Epineza with three. Powell only with one sack. Do I still have him as my rush linebacker? I could have sworn I do. Let me check the depth chart, just to make sure that it didn't get messed up. We also can check to see what his dev, his dev trade is as well here. I'm hoping for superstar, superstar X factor. That would be really nice. And just star. Interesting, interesting. Let's see the specialist here. We still have him as our uh, rush right outside linebacker, so Tavon Powell is uh, <laughs> looking interesting here, to say the least. Interesting. Uh, we did get, have to trade up a first round pick and our second round pick this year for him. So, I mean, we'll see what happens here. I'm going to upgrade the team and we'll sim to the end of the season. We were five and one. We went twelve and five last year. I'm hoping for twelve and five and better. Honestly, twelve or five or better, I'm happy with. As long as I don't see anything less than twelve and five, I won't complain. And we went fourteen and three. Got the one seat again. Okay, 
This Rams team were cooking with gas. The Cardinals fell to 10 and 4. The, the Eagles were also the the Eagles were 13 and 3. So we really needed to go 12 14 and 3 there. And let's see our team schedule here. Who did we lose to? So we lost back to back at Cardinals at Packers and this Packers was a trap game too. Thankfully I didn't activate it. But then after that, we went on a massive win streak, lost to the Vikings there in week 17. So our only losses were on the road. We lost at Vikings, at Cardinals, at Packers. The second time we beat the car, we played the Cardinals, we beat them. Really happy with the team. Let's look at the roster here. Let's look at the stats. Third best offense in the league. And the ninth best defense. Top five offense, top 10 defense. Mark Farr had a phenomenal year. 4,600 yards, 38 touchdowns, eight interceptions, rushing. Kyron Williams, again, with another year over 1,000 rushing yards, 12 touchdowns. Receiving Pukunakua, Goodwell, and A.J. Brown, all with over 1,000 yards. Pukunakua with 15 touchdowns, A.J. Brown with nine. On the offensive line here, so we have a weak link in the offensive line. John Carson uh, allowed a sack a game. That's not too good. But defensively, Eddie Epineza with 10 sacks, Robinson with 8.5, Chubb with 7.5, Kobe Turner with 7.5, Oddwell with 4. So our defense, a, a lot of players got a lot of sacks. We spread around the ball here. And now we're ready to go to the divisional round where I'm hoping we don't have the same exact fate that we did in the last divisional round. Mark Farr is now an 85 overall, playing up to a 90. Really, really good traits. We're liking what we're seeing out of Mark Farr here. Cannot complain. And we're playing the Arizona Cardinals. Why wouldn't we be playing the Arizona Cardinals? Why wouldn't we, Madden? All right, the Arizona Cardinals are the seven seed. They beat the two seed Eagles, absolutely smoked them. And now, of course, here we are playing the stupid-ass Arizona Cardinals. Awesome. Here's the team. Puka Nakua is playing up to a 99. AJ Brown's playing up to a 98. Tez Walker's playing up to an 87. Mark Farr's playing up to a 91. Kyron Williams is playing up to a 95. This team's damn so damn good. We're a 90 overall right now. 92 offense, 88 defense, 90 overall. I'm going to jump into the game here if needed, just because it's the Cardinals. Honestly, I was just going to sim again and hope we didn't lose. Oh, the Cardinals have George Kittle, Dallas Turner, and an X-Factor rookie D-tackle. I see why they're so good. But I'm going to jump in here and hope and pray that we don't lose a second time to the Cardinals and a second time into the Divisional. That would really suck if in back-to-back -back seasons... Back-to-back -back seasons where we get a first round bye, but then lose in the divisional. So let's just beat the Cardinals here. They only get a field goal. I'm fine with that. We get a touchdown. We're up seven to three. They get another field goal. Come on, let's get more points, boys. We have to we're held to a field goal. Okay. 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 All right, and I didn't have to go in. We went 24 to 13. Our defense played really good. JJ McCarthy's the quarterback for the Cardinals. No wonder they only had a heel. They only had 137 passing yards and no touchdowns. They used him exactly like they did in Michigan. Did absolutely nothing. <laughs> Hand the ball off 30 times a game and then make a couple of throws. We beat the Arizona Cardinals. I didn't even have to go into the game. That's always nice when I don't have to help my team to a win. We beat the Cardinals. Let's now see who we have to play in the NFC Conference Championship game. And it is, uh-oh, the Atlanta Falcons. My favorite team, the Atlanta Falcons, is here. Obviously, I'd prefer for the Rams to win, but... At least if they don't, then the Falcons can make it to a Super Bowl, which I guess is something. But again, I'm going to jump right in here. And let's see who the Falcons got. Still got Jesse Bates, Kyle Pitts. They got an X-Factor corner, Caleb Stanton. We're now playing back-to-back -back teams that were able to draft a rookie X-Factor player. So good for them, I guess. The Indianapolis Colts have made it to the Super Bowl. 
So whoever wins this game will play the Indianapolis Colts. Hopefully that is us, the Los Angeles Rams. And now we start off the game with a field goal. The Falcons go back and score a touchdown. We answer right back. The Falcons do as well. 17 to 14. We get another touchdown. Falcons get a field goal. It's a one possession game at the half. And the game is stalled. But we get a touchdown. We're, we get a field goal. We're up by three scores. And we almost choked that away. <laughs> we all... Desmond Ritter? Ritter took the Falcons to this conference championship? Madden is so unrealistic. No way in hell would that ever happen. But alas, that doesn't matter. This is now two straight games. I didn't have to jump into the game. We beat the Cardinals. We beat the Falcons. And the Rams are going to the Super Bowl. The Los Angeles Rams are Super Bowl bound again. They just won a Super Bowl a couple years ago when they beat the Bengals. And now I am taking them back without Aaron Donald even. They didn't even need Aaron Donald to make it to their next Super Bowl. Where we are playing the Indianapolis Colts. Super Bowl Day me Media. Head coach, this means everything to me. We've earned 10 staff points for making it to the Super Bowl. Few yearly awards. Did uh, Mark Farr win MVP? No, that went to Burrow. Farr was third on MVP list. Offensive player of the year. Farr was third. Kyron Williams and Puka Nakua were here as well. Nobody on defensive player of the year. I don't think we had any rookies. Oh, Powell was defensive rookie of the year? How? He had like four fucking sacks. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to complain about that. Maybe that means he'll go up in dev trait? Question mark. Let's see if we got any dev trait increases here for the Super Bowl. My, Mark Farr is going up to X-Factor, baby. He will be an X-Factor quarterback here against the Indianapolis Colts. Let me change his X-Factor ability here. Brick Wall. While in the pocket, passers with abilities are almost guaranteed to break the first sack attempt. You know what? I'm actually fine with that. If we do allow a lot of sacks, he's going to need that. And defensively, Powell does go up to Superstar Dev. So we actually haven't had a single X-Factor on this defense all season. But we've had Greg Newsome go up to Superstar. Epineza go up to Superstar. Powell go up to Superstar. And we've also seen Marlon Humphreys and, DJ and Daxton Hill with Superstar. So a lot of Superstar Devs all around the board. But that would be very interesting to make it to win a Super Bowl without a single X-Factor on defense. We had an X-Factor in defense in Aaron Donald, but then he retired, and now I bet he's feeling pretty silly that he didn't play another four years to make it to the Super Bowl again with the same team. And I just realized, I think the only players that are currently on the Rams <laughs> that are on this team are Cameron Curl and Kobe Turner. <laughs> so there are nine different starters on this defense that the Rams don't have. So we had to uh, rehaul the defense tremendously. But now let's upgrade the rest of the team and go into the Super Bowl. Oh, it's just AJ Brown. We'll give him a. Uh, we'll give him physical so that he goes up to a 97 overall here for the uh, Super Bowl. All right, and here we go. Super Bowl day, baby. Let's win a Super Bowl. Jonathan Taylor, Leatu Latu's an X-Factor. Wow. Does Leatu Latu start out as an X-Factor or did he just go up to X-Factor? I actually don't, I don't know actually, but good for Leatu Latu if he was able to go up to an X-Factor. And now, Super Bowl. Indy, Los Angeles Rams versus the Indianapolis Colts. Can we win three straight games with me not even have to jump into the game? And... Very boring first quarter. The Colts get a touchdown, though. We answer right back with a touchdown of our own. And it is a 14-7, 14-10 halftime. Really defensive battle, but we go up 21-10. We go up to 28-10. This should be a lock. And it is. And we win the Super Bowl 28-17. Very easy Super Bowl. Let's see the highlights. Mark Farr, 21 for 25. Four touchdowns, one interception. Played great. We only gave the ball nine times to Kyron Williams. He's probably pissed. At least he's happy that he won a Super Bowl, I guess. Receiving. Puka Nakua, five catches, 113 yards, two touchdowns. That's insane. Tez Walker had seven catches for 50 yards. 
Randy Goodwell had four catches for one yard. A.J. Brown had three catches only for 21 yards, but he got a touchdown, so he can't complain. Did we allow any sacks? No. No sacks allowed in the Super Bowl by our lockdown defensive line, but the Colts were sacked four times. Who on our defense got sacks? Eddie Epineza got a sack. Robinson got a sack. And then four half sacks here. Interceptions. Only one interception was thrown, and that was actually by our guy to an Indianapolis Colts guy. But alas, the Los Angeles Rams have won a Super Bowl. And it feels really nice to get a Super Bowl win here in Madden because I went on a hot sh a streak there of not winning a lot of Super Bowls. Spoiler alert for the people here who haven't won some of my previous ones, which you should go check out. They all were a lot of fun and really fun to make, and uh, I think they're pretty good videos for you guys. I'm quickly just advancing to the offseason just so we saw who got Super Bowl MVP, and then I will end the video. Super Bowl MVP did go to Mark Barr. As expected. I thought maybe Puka Nakua could have gotten it, but he did not. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, please leave comments down below on how I can improve my Madden videos. Let me know what you want to see, what you don't want to see, what you enjoyed, what you didn't enjoy. And thank you all so much for watching, and peace.